This is part two for my Volvo techs out there that are working on DPS lower units. So this is the older DPS unit that I'm going to reassemble. I'm going to go through the shimming procedures first. I've got everything apart in the previous video. Uh, it's all cleaned up, so we're going to go through the shimming procedures for the lower gear. First the pinion gear, then the forward gear, then the tube gear, which I call the reverse gear. So let's get started. First, we're going to start by measuring the pinion gear. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by putting the vertical drive shaft in a fixture in the vise. And then I have this race on the housing. We're going to put a special tool here. And then we're going to put the pinion gear and torque that down and measure the clearance between the pinion gear and the actual fixture tool. What this does is this tells us the location of that pinion gear in the case. And we shim that to get the first step of gear lash and then gear pattern. Okay, all our measurements are done without shim. So the shim that sits inside the case, there's no shims on this race. And I'm gonna put that race on there. I then have this special tool, uh, 385-5870, and that's gonna go over this shaft and rest on top of that bearing. And then I'm gonna put the pinion gear on top of the tool and then I'm going to take my pinion nut and I'm going to torque my pinion nut and the book will tell you to torque it between 72 and 87 foot pounds and I'm going to put the uh, nut that I took out I'm going to use this just for this procedure and then I'm going to replace the pinion nut and put a new one on so the cup side faces the gear So the book says between 72 and 87 foot-pounds, I'm torquing it to 80 foot-pounds. I want to write that number down so that I remember to torque it exactly to that. So I'm torquing 80 foot-pounds after I'm done. So I'm going to rotate the tool a little bit to center it. All right, so we're gonna measure these slots with a feeler gauge. So the average between these three dimensions is 20 thousandths of an inch for a feeler gauge measurement. We're gonna write that down. So I made this chim couch sheet years ago. I used this in the class uh, to teach my certification classes for Volvo or for my core students. And basically when I measured that gear, it came up with 20,000. So I'm gonna take the gear off the fixture and underneath the gear is gonna be etching number. Add or subtract that number gives me the shims that I need. And those shims are gonna go under this race where this tool is sitting right now. And you flip this upside down, that's gonna place that gear in the case where it's supposed to. All right, I've broken the pinion nut loose. I'm gonna take the pinion nut, put it flush with the end of the shaft, take a plastic-based hammer, hold the fixture like this in your hand firmly, and then strike the end of it to break it loose. And that pops the shaft off the gear. I can put it back in the fixture tool now. I'm gonna take this nut off, and the book will tell you that on the bottom of the gear, there may be an etching number. Now, if there isn't an etching number and I don't see one, the number would be a plus number. Uh, if it's zero, it would be plus zero. If it was one, it would be plus one. If it was negative, it would be negative three, something like that. The only number I see here is 031. That is not an etching number. So the etching numbers on this particular unit, it's a newer set, of, a, a new gear set. And on the new gear set, what they've done is they put all the etching numbers on the tube gear. So all the etching numbers are here on this tube gear. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but um, I see F minus 3, R minus 3, P minus 4. So P is the pinion gear. So that means that that etching number, not on the bottom of the skiers on that tube gear, and that's why when you replace one gear, you replace them all because they come as a set now. You can't guess what the etching numbers. 
The gears are all machined and then they're measured, they're shot, painted, measured, and then they're etched. And this way you know what the correction is from a perfect gear. So this gear, a perfect gear, would be plus zero. That means the height of the gear would be exactly the same as the original specification. Um, when they cut them, obviously, they don't cut every one exactly the same. So what we have to do is we have to take that etching number and that's the correction from a perfect gear. So I measured the average was 20 thousandths. Uh, I take that negative four and turn it into a thousandths of an inch. So that means my shims that I need to put in the case under that are 16 thousandths. The next gear measure we're gonna do from the book is we're gonna measure the forward gear. And the forward gear, if it doesn't have it etching again, is gonna be on that tube gear, and we'll get that in a minute. I need the race and put a little bit of oil on the bearing. So I don't feel any, uh, any rubbing or anything on this gear, so I'm ready to measure it. Now in the book, it tells you you need a shim fixture tool. That shim fixture tool is 385600. And when it tells you to measure it, it says on the, in the book to measure it, place the race on top of the bearing, rotate it to seat the bearing, position the shim fixture on top of the gear with the recessed side faces down. So this faces the race straight down like that. We're gonna take a measurement from this surface, which is a perfectly finished surface, down to this surface of the gear. And I'm going to put my fixture tool back on here. And I'm going to measure from this surface down to the gear. And I like to do this in a couple of places. So 0 0.535. 0 0.535. 0 0.535. 0 0.535. So 0.535. I'm going to have to subtract the shim fixture tool thickness which is exactly half an inch, or point five zero zero. Okay. So on my sheet, I have in the next column, I have that measurement, 0 0.535 minus 5,000, so 0 0.035. The next measurement procedure in the book tells me to take the etching number off, that dimension, and the etching number on this tooth here is F is minus three. So I need to subtract three thousandths and 0 0.035 minus 0, 0, 0.003, which means 0 0.032. Now, they've already taken a calculation called the nominal dimension of the gear and the case, and you have to take that nominal dimension. Each drive's different, so you always need the service manual for that dimension. If you don't know what it is, DPS A, DPS, it's different numbers, it's a different case, the etching numbers are different. Um, so you really have to go into the book. In this case, that number is 0.055. I'm gonna take my total figure of the measure of my gear, subtract it from the tool and the etching number calculation, 0 0.032, and I subtract that out and I got 0 0.023. So I'm gonna put 23 thousandths of shims behind this race in the front of the case, and that's gonna place that gear in reference to the pinion. Okay, the final gear to measure is the tube gear. So we're going to measure this gear next. So now it gets a little more complex. What we're going to do is we're going to put this together with the inner prop shaft, the outer prop shaft. We have to press the, um, the gear back onto the inner prop shaft first. So it's going to go over that procedure and you need a special tool to press that back on the press fixture which is uh, 3855 361 that supports it off of the press and then we're going to press the shaft back on the bearing so I'm going to go do that. There's another interesting uh, thing I just remembered is I'm using a newer book from 2003 um, and I also have these older books this one's quite old uh, one of the original blue binder books 
uh, one of the one of the original books from 1999 and the tool that you're supposed to press this together with says it's 3855861 I have 861 in my hand and I'm going to press that I'm going to press the drive shaft back onto this gear so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 861 and put it on a press it fits here and it presses on the bearing itself. In the new book, the part number in the book is 3855361. So there's a typo in the new book, it's the actual wrong part number. The old book is the, the number that you need. So this actually is 861 to press that on. So I'm gonna take this to a press I'm going to take this tool, put it on the press. I'm going to take the gear. I'm going to put it on here, facing down on that tool. Make sure it's nice and centered on the bearing. And then I'm going to press this shaft back onto that gear. Nothing goes between these two. The shims go on this side for that bearing. So I'm going to go press this back together. OK, I press the gear back onto the shaft. And the next step in the book, it says, is to take that forward bearing race here. All right, and I'm going to put that down inside this fixture tool. So this fixture tool, there's two different ones. One is for DPSA. This is for DPS. This part number is 355872. And I'm going to put that down inside. And it sits inside the fixture tool on these feet on the bottom of it. Then I'm going to take my shaft and drop that in here until it's on the race. And I need to take a special fixture tool. So the next step in the book is to take a spacer tool. And that spacer tool here is 3855871. I'm going to put that on top of this again. Make sure there's no shims that are stuck to that surface. These are those little shims that go underneath that bearing, and that gets pressed back on the shaft. So these sit underneath that bearing, and that spaces the tube gear, which we're about to measure. So I've got the spacer on here. I then am going to take the bearing itself. That bearing will ride on the inside of the tube gear as such. So I'm going to put that down the shaft. Maybe. Then I'm going to put the two gear down over this. Now one thing before you do that, what you want to do is if you've already changed the seals, you want to protect these seals from getting cut by the splines. So what I'm going to do seal protector. I still need to change the seals. I like to do that after I measure everything and then do one final inspection. So there's a seal protector. Slide that back down over the shaft. When it gets to the end of the shaft, that will just sit there. And I'm going to rotate these two shafts independently, put a little downward pressure, try and keep them centered. And then holding down, I'm going to lightly bring these thumb screws down so they just touch that gear. And I can give them a little snug with my fingers. That's it. Now, the tricky part is where you're going to measure it. So I'm going to take them and measure from this surface, and I'm going to measure down to that shiny surface right there. So again, I'm going to use my vernier calipers with a foot. This really is where this comes into play, and it's helpful. And I'm going to put that right on that raised surface as such. I'm going to bring this down so it just touches the surface. Keep that in, in mind that that has to be perfectly square. This takes a little bit of hand-eye coordination typically. This will take two or three attempts to get this measurement correct. I'm going to measure in three different locations. So again, bring this down. Touches the housing. And what I want to do is write that number down.
Okay, so I have the three gears measured, and we'll go over that. So my two gear, the average dimension is 0 0.041. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to grab my four gear shim dimension. And that's the shims that are under that race in the case, and I have to subtract where am I going to move that assembly up or down with these shims from what I'm just measuring here from the race that's on that tube gear that holds this tube gear up and down. So the, the, the shims up here under the small bearing are gonna move this gear, which is on the tube gear. These shims are gonna move all of them. So the whole thing is gonna move. So whatever this I measured was 23 thousandths. I'm going to subtract that 0.0. .0 Is two is eight. Eighteen zero point zero one eight. And zero point zero one eight. And the etching number off the two gear is So I have my two gear shims, which are going to be these little shims as 15 thousandths. I have my four gear shims, which are going to be 23 thousandths. And then I have my pinion gear shims, which is going to be 16 thousandths. So this is going to put all the gears in the case where they're supposed to be. I'll start reassembly in the next video um, and show you how to put it back together now that I've done all the math. Okay, I've got all the gears measured. I've got all the calculations done. I know what shims I'm gonna put on the case, so I'm gonna do a final cleaning, go through the uh, seal removal and installation of the carrier and for the tube gear, and then what I'll do is um, put it back together. So if you like the video, hit that subscribe button. Um, I'll see you on the next video where I actually start to reassemble it, and I'll show you how to put it back together and measure it.